Hi there. If you are preparing to take an important test soon and need a quick refresher on certain specific topics, you came to the right place. This is Review Central's Explainer Series, and it is designed to augment your review efforts by attempting to explain in the simplest, clearest, and most concise manner certain topics that are likely to appear in your forthcoming exam. For this video we will endeavor to quickly explain to you the process of balancing chemical equations. But first, a quick disclaimer. This is not a science lesson. We neither offer a full, comprehensive course on a given topic, nor do we claim to be science and chemistry experts. Prior knowledge of a given topic is presumed. If this topic is totally alien and unfamiliar to you, we recommend you take the appropriate course or class. And what types of tests are you likely to encounter balancing chemical equations? This topic usually appears in exams with science subtests. Actually, in general, questions involving balancing chemical equations do not appear that often in exams. But certain specific exams are known to feature them quite regularly while others feature them sparingly or only from time to time. Among the college entrance exams, in the Philippines at least, we've seen this topic most often in the UCAT, and only quite sparingly, if at all, in the DCAT and UZTET. But almost all college entrance tests with science subtests have a good share of chemistry questions. Always. So there is a good probability that this topic may appear in these exams sooner or later. It may also appear in some professional licensure exams with science subtests, like the licensure exam for professional teachers, especially in the science specialization subtest for Bachelor of Secondary Education graduates. We don't have any information about it yet, but we dare to assume that this topic would most likely be included in the licensure exam for chemical engineers as well. The qualifying exam for the DOST scholarship is also very likely to include this topic in its science subtest. International scholastic qualifying exams with science subtests may also feature this topic. The SAT, for instance, offers an optional suite of assessments particular to science on top of the standard SAT. One of these optional assessments is on chemistry, where this topic on balancing chemical equations is very likely to be included. We will add to our list if and when we hear of other specific tests that feature questions on this topic. Check out the description for any updates. If your test includes a science subtest, especially on exams that are known to favor chemistry, it is to your best interest to get yourself a refresher on balancing chemical equations. Now let's get on to it. Questions involving balancing chemical equations may appear in science proficiency exams. If chemistry is not among your favorite subjects then you will probably find these questions daunting. Don't panic, however. There are very few things to remember, not even to memorize, when it comes to balancing chemical equations. But first, let's quickly take a look at how chemical equations look like and what their components are. In the above illustration, the left side of the arrow is called the reactant side, and the right side is called the product side. CH4 and 2O2 are the reactants, while CO2 and 2H2O are the products. Individually, each of these is called a formula. Note that a formula may contain a single element, example, H2, or a combination of elements, that is, a compound, example, H2O. The leading 2s in 2O2 and 2H2O are called coefficients, while the lagging smaller and slightly lower 2s are called subscripts. But how do we know if the above equation is balanced? To balance a chemical equation, Simply sum up the numbers of atoms on either side of the arrow, and compare these sums to ensure they are equal. The number of atoms for a given element is calculated by multiplying the coefficient of any formula containing that element by the element's subscript in the formula. A handy technique, especially if you're not yet proficient in balancing chemical equations, is to tabulate as shown. As you can see from the table, the above chemical equation is balanced on the onset. Now, let's have an example of an unbalanced equation and proceed to balance it. 
Let's use our table to inspect the elements and determine which ones are not balanced. Okay, so we can confirm that the equation is not balanced. So how do we balance it? Here's Review Central's pro tip on how to balance chemical equations. To balance a chemical equation, simply sum up the numbers of atoms on either side of the arrow, and compare these sums to ensure they are equal. The number of atoms for a given element is calculated by multiplying the coefficient of any formula containing that element by the element subscript in the formula. Commit these to memory. You may only add or change the coefficients, not the subscripts. You may add or change coefficients on either or both sides. Bonus tip, tabulate for an easier and more organized balancing act. Going back to our unbalanced chemical equation. To balance O, we can add a coefficient of 2 on H2O on the left side. However, this has upset the balance of H. We can counter this by adding another coefficient of 2, this time on H2 on the right side. You will quickly learn that balancing chemical equations has a trial and error aspect to it. But, with lots of practice, you will quickly reduce the errors and achieve balance a lot faster. As you become a lot more proficient with your balancing act, you will soon ditch the table and simply do it by quick inspection. Now let's apply what we just learned on a question modeled on an actual science proficiency exam. Note, this one is modeled on a MOOCAT question. The question goes as follows. What are the coefficients that will balance the formula equation below? To balance the given chemical equation, we'll need to count all of the atoms on each side of the chemical equation. Once we know how many of each type of atom there are, we can only change the coefficients or the numbers in front of atoms or compounds to balance the equation. In the given formula, there are one atom of aluminum, three atoms of chlorine, one atom of sodium, one atom of oxygen, and one atom of hydrogen on the left side of the equation. On the other hand, there are one atom of aluminum, three atoms of oxygen, three atoms of hydrogen, one atom of sodium, and one atom of chlorine on the right side of the equation. Let's summarize these using a table, as shown. As you can see, the chemical equation is not balanced. To balance the equation, we insert coefficients as follows. Insert a coefficient of 3 on NaOH on the reactant side. Insert a coefficient of 3 on NaCl on the product side. Now, there are one atom of aluminum, three atoms of chlorine, three atoms of sodium, three atoms of oxygen, and three atoms of hydrogen on both sides. Let's again summarize these using a table, as shown. The chemical equation is now balanced. Therefore, the coefficients we are looking for are 1, 3, 1, and 3. The correct answer is A. Let's list down our takeaways from this explainer, shall we? 1. Chemical equations are represented by additions of formulas on the left side, called the reactants, and the right side, called the products. 2. A formula may contain a single element, example, H2, or a combination of elements, that is, a compound, example, H2O. 3. The reactants and products are typically separated by an arrow, although in some books and even exams, an equal sign may be used. 4. You may find numbers in the reactants and products. Leading numbers are called coefficients, while the smaller and slightly lower lagging numbers are called subscripts. 5. The number of atoms for a given element is calculated by multiplying the coefficient of any formula containing that element by the element subscript in the formula. 6. To balance a chemical equation, simply sum up the numbers of atoms on either side of the arrow and compare these sums to ensure they are equal. 7. This is super important, you may only add or change coefficients, not the subscripts. And 8. You may add or change the coefficients on either or both sides.
When you're done with this explainer video, we encourage you to find and solve more similar problems for practice. By practicing to solve many of these types of problems, you become adept in balancing chemical equations that you can probably do it mentally and very quickly. We have compiled, and we continue to compile, many more similar and related problems from various science tests, and from them we are making drill videos for you. If and when they are ready you will find their links in the description. And that's it for our quick explainer on balancing chemical equations. If you have questions or clarifications, please leave us a comment and we will try our best to reply to you as soon as possible. Please also let us know in the comment section if there's any specific topic you want us to explain to you. Or try to explain to you, that is. Check out our various explainer playlists for other topics that we've already featured. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to Review Central and click or press the bell button to make sure you get notified whenever we upload a new review material on the channel. Please like if you find this video useful and feel free to share to others who may also benefit from it. Good luck and see you in our next explainer.